I think it's easier to control audio volume and panning in the timeline as opposed to working with it inside the effect controls panel. At least that's the case in most instances. So to see how that works, let's go to working files. Let's go to projects. Scroll on down here to 1704, adjust audio timeline. Now we're working in the Creative Cloud version of Premiere Pro rather than the CS6 version, which is kind of in the norm in this course. I'm doing this because the timeline controls are different enough here inside the Creative Cloud version that it warrants a different lesson. So we're going to change volume and some panning here on clips in several different sequences in this lesson. We'll start off with these two clips here that are audio only. First order of business when you work with audio inside the timeline is to expand the view of the clip. So I'm going to hover my cursor between those two tracks and pull it way down like that so you get a better look at it. We see that the volume level here, the waveform, is very high. It goes right to the top, which means this guy is going to be pretty loud. Let's just play a little segment here. Well, I know how much you so you can see it goes right up to 0 dBFS. If we want to drop the volume, we can do that inside the Effect Controls panel, but it's more intuitive to do it down here in the timeline. So I'm going to select this, make it active. I'm going to open up the Effect Controls panel so you can see what we're doing. You can see the changes. I'll open up Volume here. Open up this Disclosure Triangle so we can see the level. And go back down here again. Now I'm going to change the volume here by hovering my cursor, my Selection Tool, right there in that little line. That line has several names. It could be the Volume Level Control Line. It could be the Rubber Band. Sometimes people call it the Gain Envelope. We'll just call it the volume control line here. When I hover my cursor there, I get that little two-headed arrow, meaning I can pull the volume up and down. So I want to pull it down because it's kind of loud. So I'll bring it down a bit here, and you see I can drop it there. You see the number as I drop it. It's not easy to get an exact figure here unless you hold down the controller of the command key. So I'm going to get down around minus 12 or so. Now I'm going to hold down the controller command key, and it'll fine-tune as I move it down there to get right to 12 or very close to 12. So the controller command key lets you get a little bit more of a fine-tuned control. Now I'm going to let go. I've dropped it about 12 dB, and you can see that right there, 11.6. If I hover here, it's going to say 11.6 or 5.5. I've now dropped the volume. Let's just play this now. You wanted me to stay. Now, if you watch the view meter here, check out the level here. But it just couldn't be that so it started off at 0 dBFS, 0 decibels below full scale, and now it's about minus 12, which is what you'd expect because we dropped it about minus 12. So that's how you control volume overall for an entire clip. Let's do the same thing here with Gettysburg here. The volume's kind of low here. You can see it's low there. Go. Our father is brought forth on this continent. So I want to raise the volume. So I'm going to hover my cursor here until it turns into that double-headed arrow and lift it up. But as far as I can go is 6.02, which is the same level that you can go up here inside the Effect Controls panel. Let me open that up. The highest you can go is 6.0 here, which is actually 6.02. That's as far as you can go, which is really not as far as we want to go. Let's just try this. And a new nation. I want to go louder than that. So I'm going to undo that by doing Controller Command Z. And I want to increase the gain of this clip and then deal with the audio level. So I'm going to right click on the clip and go to Audio Gain. I'm going to increase it 12 dB. Click OK. Now you see the volume change show up here. So it's pretty much up to full scale. Let's get to the beginning here. Right there. Our father has brought forth on this con. So it's pretty good, but it could go a little bit louder. So now that we've given a gain boost, I'm going to play it and then adjust this in real time and watch the changes here and listen to it at the same time. Continent, a new nation. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men. So there you go. Now we changed that in real time and we lifted up 3.8. So we did 12 at first and then another four or so, and you can do that in real time. Okay, what happens if you want to do this gradually over time instead of for the whole clip like that? Let's take a look at this next sequence here. These are several scenic shots with a music bed and natural sound here. Right now they're mixed together and it's probably not the best mix. Let's listen. The water's a little loud and the music is fine, but nevertheless, the first order of business is to bring the volume of the music and the natural sound up gradually. So I'm going to expand the view of these two guys, and I need more real estate here, so I'm going to take this little middle thing here and drag that way up. I don't need to see the clips there, I just need to see the audio. Now I'll expand these guys way down like that. And I want to bring the audio level of the music up a little bit at a time. I need to add keyframes. So I click on this to make it active. When I make this active, this little diamond shows up here to say that I can add or remove keyframes. If I click there, it puts a keyframe right there. And that keyframe marks the beginning or the end of some change. In this case, it's going to mark the end of a change. I'll pull the current time indicator a little bit ahead of it like this. I'll add another keyframe. And I can drag that keyframe up or down. So I hover my cursor over it. I get a little oval there telling me that I can grab that little button. If I click away here, it talks about moving the whole thing up and down. So you know, if I hover over it there, it turns into a little oval, which means I can drag these guys individually. So I'll take that guy and drag it down. 
I'm going to mute this track for the time being by pressing the M button there. Let's just listen to the music. So you see how we changed it over time by adding keyframes using that little button there. You can also add keyframes by using a keyboard modifier. Let me go down here to the end. I want to fade it out. I want to add a keyframe here. I could just click on this little button to do that, but I'm going to put my cursor there and press the control or command key on my keyboard. And that turns into a little plus sign, meaning that I can add a keyframe. So boom, I add it that way. Another way to add a keyframe is to change my cursor to the pen tool right over there. Click on the pen tool. When I hover over the line, the plus sign shows up automatically. So the pen tool lets you make a keyframe simply by clicking, which is fine unless you want to just pull this thing up and down, in which case you're always adding a keyframe if you want to pull it up and down. So if you're working with the pen tool to add keyframes pretty quickly, which is an effective way to do things, if you want to increase or decrease the volume someplace else besides where a keyframe is, then hold down the controller command key and it switches to the selection tool where you can pull it up and down like that. Let me just pull this guy down using the pen tool. I hover, I get that little circle again, or that oval. It's actually, I guess, a hexagon. Pull it down like that. So let's hear this thing now. And the thing is, the keyframes are not stuck in time. You can hover over there and drag them left and right, up and down, to change them as you wish. If you think it faded too slowly, you can move it to the right. If you think it faded too fast, you can pull it back. I'll click on this one and drag it right or left like that. Notice when you click on it, it turns yellow. That means it's active. If I press the delete key now or the backspace key, that'll get rid of it, just so you know. I'll do Control or Command Z to undo that. All right, let's talk about dealing with the sound here in this video clip. I'll turn off the mute button so we can hear it now. Go back to the beginning. You know, we probably don't want it to come on abruptly like that. We probably want it to come on gradually. We can do what's called a track keyframe to control the entire track rather than a clip-by-clip -clip basis like this when there's so many clips and you access the track keyframes over here, this little button there. I click on that, I can switch between clip keyframes and track keyframes. So I'm gonna go over to track keyframes. And notice what happens, you get this little track volume here that says, okay, what are we controlling here? Volume or panner, what are we gonna control? And if we apply any effects to the entire track, then these guys will show up here. You apply effects to an entire track inside the audio track mixer, which is not visible here by default. To see it, you go up to window, audio track mixer like that. And inside the audio track mixer, you can go over here and add effects to the entire track. And they'll show up over here if you add them there. I'm going to explain how to use the audio track mixer in a separate lesson. I'll close that down for now. All right, let's talk about just using the track volume control here, though, which is the default setting for when you apply this little keyframe for tracks. Notice that the keyframe turns with different shape. It has a little dot in the middle of it. That's a track keyframe versus a clip keyframe. I want to control the volume of this entire track and bring the volume up and then hold it there and then drop it at the end. So I've got the pen tool selected again, but I'd rather work with the selection tool. To me, it's a little more intuitive and predictable. So I got the selection tool there. I'm going to click on this little button to add a keyframe there and go ahead of it a little bit, add another keyframe. I can now drag that down too. We'll have those guys come up together now. You know, much nicer. And maybe it's a little too loud overall, so I can hover there and pull down the entire track volume like that. Not just the clip, but the entire track. And notice how the volume changes here. It gets a little quieter. We go to a new scene there, but that's okay because that's normal. This is not water falling anymore, so you don't want to hear that background sound of the wind really obviously there, but you can control the entire track this way. And at the end, I can also bring it down. So I'm going to take my selection tool here, hold on the control key now, or the command key on a Mac, and click there to add a keyframe. Hold on the controller command again, add another one, and drag that down like that. It won't be too obvious because the sound there is kind of quiet. I'm going to take music and pull it left like this. Take this keyframe right there, and drag it to the left. Like have the music drop before the background sound like this. So you hear the natural sound kind of hovering there at the end while the music has faded away. And it's easy to see things. That's why I like working in the timeline here. You can see where things relate to the clips. It's much easier, I think, and more intuitive to work down here. All right, let's go to this last one here. Here we're going to do some panning and also control some volume. Let me just expand the view here a bit by, first of all, getting rid of that little video part. We don't need to see that. I'll expand the view of this bottom one first and this guy here. I want to have the thunder go from right to left, and this is why. Take a look at the clouds here. So the clouds come in from the right. I want the thunder to go from right to left as well. So we're going to pan that, and I also want to increase the volume gradually over time. So I get the wind coming up gradually here, which does pretty much already anyways, but I'm going to show you how to do that again with keyframes. 
Got this guy selected like that. I'm going to switch over to the effect control so you can see what's going on there. Rail pump volume, level. I'll just hover my cursor there, hold on the controller command key, add that keyframe. Do it again there and bring that volume up gradually. I want to have it drop down gradually here again. So controller command click, controller command click, drag it down. Now I'm going to work with panning down here. The volume you can see comes up gradually anyways. will drop kind of suddenly at the end, but I want to deal with panning first. So I'm going to pull that up a little bit like so. Expand the view a little bit. Notice that's a stereo track there, left and right channels. I want to switch over to panning. So how do I do that? Click on this little FX button there. And I go over to panner and turn that on. Right now volume level is turned on. So I go down to panner, balance. Now I turn that on. Now we have the panner going. How can you tell the panel is going? Well, you can only click on this thing and take a look at it. See that that's what's active. So I want to pan it from right to left as the thunder comes across the scene there. So to pan it from right to left, I'm going to put a keyframe here at the beginning. We'll need on the controller command key. There's a keyframe. This is not the volume control rubber band. This is not the gain envelope. This is the panner. I'm going to drag that guy way down to the right here. Right is at the bottom. And I'm going to click over here. Again, with the controller command key down. Got that. I'm going to pull that up to the top, which is to the left. So we're now panning from right to the left, and you have the little letters there telling you that you're doing that as well. Let's listen to that in isolation. I'm going to solo this track. We'll listen to that in isolation like this. If you have a stereo headset on now, or if you've got a stereo speaker, this should go from right to left. Then you can make it go right to left a little bit faster by just dragging this left like that, if you want to do that. If you want the transit to go faster as well, you can pull that in like that. In any event, we've now made it go right to left. And now I want to control the volume at the end, so I switch back, click U, go to volume, and select level. So now we've got the gain envelope here, or the volume control line. I want to have it just fade out at the end. So I'm going to use my little diamonds to control this one. Now I'll go over here, click on that little diamond, go to the end here, more or less, click on the diamond again. I can just grab that keyframe, pull it down like so, and have the volume fade away like this. So that's how you control volume and panning here in the timeline. I think it's much more intuitive. It's very helpful to be able to see where the volume changes are relative to the location in the clip. And this is going to come in real handy when you do some specialized audio edits called J and L edits, which I explain in a separate lesson.